scientists claim they discovered human DNA from a 400,000-year-old fossil. The previous oldest known DNA dated back only a hundred thousand years old. When scientists initially uncovered pieces of ancient human bones in Europe, they realized the discoveries were precious. But what nobody fully appreciated then was just how ancient these remains were and how much they would ultimately reveal about the earliest pages of human history on the continent. Archaeologists revealed they had found the oldest Homo sapien bones ever found. Examination shows the remains are approximately 315,000 years old. As reported in late 2024, scientists have now managed to sequence the oldest high-quality modern human DNA ever obtained in Europe. And the findings are as dramatic as they are curious. Let's get started. The Ancient Origins The findings focus on two locations hundreds of kilometers apart, Runnies in current Germany and Zlatikin, a cave site in Czechia. Both yielded skeletal material dating more than 40,000 years, falling into the critical time when our species first made it to Europe. Until recently, information regarding these early settlers was nothing more than speculation derived from fragmentary fossils and stone implements. But DNA that survived tens of thousands of years in teeth and bones has turned everything around. Archaeologists at Ranis have been digging for decades and turning up tools with the so-called Lincolnian Ranisian Germanowician culture, a recognizable blade tool tradition that had long confounded scholars. For decades, scholars fought fiercely over whether the tools were made by the final Neanderthals or by early modern humans in the area. The remains beside them were too fragmentary to answer the question, but genetic analysis has now finally given an answer. The people at Ranis were Homo sapiens, members of our own species who existed over 45,000 years ago. The Zlatikan site, Golden Horse, in Turkish, has its own incredible history. Construction in the early 1950s unearthed a virtually intact female skull deep in the cave system. It was studied for decades primarily as a fossil oddity. And although radiocarbon dating implied great age, its exact position in the human timeline was unknown. Recent sequencing of the genome has now revealed that the woman, usually simply called the Zlatican woman, is one of the very oldest modern humans ever found in Europe. Her remains were dated to around 42,000 to 49,000 years ago, placing her squarely at the start of humans spread out into Eurasia. The DNA pulled from Ranis and Zlatican is not only extremely old, but also surprisingly well preserved. DNA is prone to degrading rapidly as time goes on particularly in temperate regions, making it challenging for researchers to pull readable sequences from bones. The fact that genomes this intact could be salvaged from these locations is almost a scientific wonder in itself. It gives scientists a previously unimaginable glimpse into a period that has been shrouded in ignorance for so long. What we do know for sure is that these people lived through an age of immense transformation. Europe in about 45,000 years ago was a continent in transformation. Neanderthals still occupied most of the continent, but their numbers were declining. Modern humans had only recently started to colonize the area from the Near East, taking with them technologies, cultural traditions, and genetic lineages that would determine prehistory's direction. The meeting of these two species, our ancestors and the Neanderthals, was one of the turning points in the narrative of humankind. And yet, until the sequencing of the Ranis and Zlatican genomes, scientists could only speculate about what those original humans were really like. Archaeological remains told part of the tale, indicating that they were adept toolmakers who fashioned blades, points, and ornaments. But uncertainties lingered. Where did they originate? How similar were they to subsequent populations? And what was their role in the eventual extinction of Neanderthals? The genetic findings start to yield answers. They verify that both Ranis and Zlatican people were whole modern humans from the same African migration to colonize the rest of the world. But in contrast with the later migrants, their ancestral lines seem to have split early, being a branch of humanity with no surviving descendants today. That discovery, suggested in initial reports and now affirmed in genomic analyses, relegates these individuals to a lost chapter in our book an experiment in human enlargement that finally left no record in the living populations of Europe. That is why scientists refer to these genomes as among the most significant ever salvaged. 
they are not just ancient DNA samples. They are a direct account of the earliest occupation of the continent by human beings, and we can see them in absolutely fabulous detail. They allow us to start piecing together not just who these individuals were, but also where they belonged in the grand human sweep. Ultimately, history is never a simple thing. Human migration into Europe was not a one-time event but a series of efforts, some of which were successful and some of which failed in extinction. These newly available genomes catch one of the earliest waves, one that illuminates the hardships and resiliency of humans at the brink of existence tens of thousands of years ago. The tale encoded in their DNA would ultimately unveil something deemed impossible. A family. One of the most astonishing features of the new genomes is not merely their antiquity, but what they tell us about family. Bones and stone implements from ancient times can inform us a lot about technology and subsistence. But DNA reveals the human element, the ties of blood, kin, and common life. For the first time, researchers have managed to reconstruct an extended family group that shared a home in Ice Age Europe. At Ranese, scientists analyzed remains from 13 individuals. And with genetic sequencing, they were able to make at least six different people out of the bones, three men and three women. One of which a strong maternal relationship between an adult woman and younger girl who proved to be a mother and her daughter sharing quarters in an era where survival was all about being strong and staying together. This find has been characterized by the insiders as one of the first and most distinct genetic verifications of a parent-offspring relationship in prehistoric Europe. But it doesn't end there. Other remains yielded people who were more distantly related, likely cousins, uncles, or members of an extended family group. This indicates that the Rani site was not merely a scatter of isolated burials, but a site in which a tight-knit community of people once lived, hunted, and fought together against the exigencies of the Ice Age environment. The relationships become even more intriguing when this Latican woman is compared to the Ranis people. She was reportedly a fifth or sixth degree relative of two of the people from Ranis. That degree of relation would be equivalent to having a great 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 grandparent in today's language. In short, though distance apart, the Latican woman was in the same large family tree as the people from Ranis. What is important is the suggestion of mobility. If individuals related by blood could be identified living hundreds of kilometers apart, then these groups must not have been stationary. Rather, they would probably have traveled extensively over large tracts of country, creating networks of interrelated groups spread across Central Europe. Such mobility would have been necessary in the days when game was thin on the ground and the climate harsh. Archaeologists have long argued that early humans lived in small nuclear families or in wider network bands. The Ranese and Zlatican evidence is exceptionally direct confirmation of either scenario. It is not only individual isolated figures, but webs of relations that stretch across space and time. For researchers, it is a glimpse into the social life of Ice Age Europe, one that demonstrates how important family was, even then. The cultural resonances in this genetic history have also been observed by insiders. The Ranis had the same stone tool tradition that surrounded Zlatican, suggesting the possibility that knowledge and skills were transferred in a family manner as well. This convergence of cultural and biological connections adds weight to the thesis that these were not random communities, but connected communities with both ancestry and lifestyle. In order to visualize this in human terms, picture a mother painstakingly instructing her daughter how to craft a blade out of stone, sharing a skill she herself learned from her parents. Picture far-off cousins encountering one another during annual migrations, seeing in one another the same familiar contours of kinship. The genetic evidence enables us to add flesh to these bones and witness people held together by love, obligation, and common ancestry. What is most chilling about this discovery is that it feels so familiar. Even across the enormous chasm of time, the genetic bonds at Ranis and Zlatican resonate with our own human experience today. Families caring for one another. Children inheriting customs. Groups dispersed but bound. Meeting the unknown with the power of kinship, the archaeological enigma. Years before DNA could tell its tale, archaeologists had been left with quiet shards, rock tools, scattered bones, and one haunting skull. These were the teasers that whispered of a human tale. 
But for decades, the fragments refused to fall into place. The Rani site in Germany and the Zlatican cave in Cheka each offered tantalizing enigmas, fueling debates that flared across scientific communities. What they stood for remained unclear until recently. At Runnies, tools preceded people. Sharp blades, deliberately fashioned points, and characteristic flint knives were buried in Ice Age sediments. Together, they were named the Linkomian Renisian Germanowichian tradition, or LRJ for short. To anyone not trained in archaeology, they were mere fragments of stone. To archaeologists, however, their shape and style hinted at something special. The only catch was that nobody could decide who had crafted them. A few researchers contended that they were the products of the final Neanderthals. Neanderthals had inhabited Europe for hundreds of thousands of years and had already developed their own impressive toolkits. Others claimed that the LRJ marked the entry of modern humans, a new culture migrating into the continent from the south. Lacking clear human remains tied to the tools, the question remained unanswered for decades. The skull of Zlatican presented an equally intransigent puzzle. When it was discovered in the 1950s, scientists knew straight away that it was old. Its shape appeared contemporary. Slightly rounded brain case, slimmed down brow ridges, but its age could not be determined. Early attempts at dating indicated a span which ranged back by tens of thousands of years. But the results fluctuated. For nearly half a century, the identity of the woman from Zlati remained a puzzle piece that refused to lock into place. Was she an early pioneer of Europe, a representative of a later migration, or something else entirely? What complicated matters further was the Ice Age environment itself. Around 45,000 years ago, Europe was a shifting landscape of extremes. In summer, much of central Germany and Cheka may have resembled a green steppe studded with herds of bison and wild horses. In winter, icy winds swept over open grasslands. Temperatures falling below 20 degrees Fahrenheit or even lower. Societies in this world required skill, adaptation, and social solidarity just to survive. But who those societies were still remained unclear. Insiders said the atmosphere among researchers at this time was plain frustration. They had equipment. They had fossils. They even had a virtually complete skull. But without genetic material, the tale remained unfinished. Origins and Enigmas When the genomes of the Rannis people and the Zlati, underscore underscore, women were ultimately cracked, scientists were amazed. The oldest known human DNA was eventually sequenced and what it says is putting everyone on edge. These weren't simply ancient people living at the periphery of Europe. They are part of a genetic lineage unlike any group living today. A branch that diverged from the core family of humans in ways that continue to confuse scientists. Based on reports, the DNA indicated that the Ranese and Zladian populations belonged to the very first wave of modern humans to arrive in Europe. Their gene signatures diverged nearly as soon as humans left Africa tens of thousands of years ago.